when I was a, a younger fellow, I saw a bloke in a bar just starting out and um, it was it was really taken strides. One of the first uh, people with a background in rugby league doing anything to, uh, that has anything to do with podcasting, uh, online content and all that type of stuff. What's happening with bloke on the bar at the moment? I know that obviously with Corona at the moment, the actual bar is not uh, operating, but what's happening in your world? Uh, mate, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been crazy. So we, we launched a beer like probably three weeks ago around one of the NRL season. Um, and it was insane. Like you, we, we just incredibly humbling. You wouldn't experience it. You know, when you, when you see these like thousands of people engaging in your content, but then also actually spending their hard earned money, it's almost a bit intimidating. Like you're almost a bit taken back by it. Cause you're like these many people actually like what I do. This is yeah. fucking crazy. Um, so yeah, you, you just, I guess you've got to push through that kind of anxiety uh, part of it. But um, yeah, with the coronavirus, it's, it's been a bit strange because people are still sitting at home doing nothing. Like, so they're actually drinking more piss than they were before, um, which is, I guess, good as a beer company. But um, from our perspective, because we're so tightly connected to footy, our, our kind of goal over the next week or two is to, all of our profits for the next two weeks will go to rugby league to, to the rugby league's players association and we'll right. partner with them to help um, players that may be struggling because they have such a massive pay cut. Cause a lot of people don't realize is that most players aren't on a million dollars. You know, there there's players on, you know, a hundred K a year, which sounds like a lot of money, but a it's for a very small period, but also B if you're pay, if you're cut immediately 75% of that, you're sitting on 30k a year as a as a person with a family. It's actually pretty hard to to survive, um, and also because your industry doesn't get the same kind of uh, like for example that I'm I'm pretty sure job seeker at this stage doesn't apply to NRL. It might, um, but yeah. So it actually can really affect the boys. So our hope is to make sure that these younger boys on the smaller contracts, if they're struggling, they can't pay rent, or or maybe it's to pay for the, the a course they want to do. Um, yeah, we're hoping to do that. So that's our focus, kind of like we don't want to be seen as someone doing really, uh, really well while everyone else is struggling, especially when the reason why we're doing really well is because of the rugby league community and because of the footy boys and that. So, yeah, that's, that's, the goal that's a real noble choice. thing to do, mate. That's a really noble thing to do. And, and I was talking about this with my old man who, who for those who are watching the show, haven't uh, seen much of my stuff, used to play rugby league for the Knights uh, back in the day. And the glory you know, days? Back in the days where you were getting paid 60 grand a year. But you know, 75% of your wage, and I think early on they were talking 79 or 85%, that is a lot of money. And even if you're making a million dollars a season, like some players are, man, you've got not only is most of that tax anyway, you earn over $150,000 a year, I think 50 cents on the dollar goes on tax. But the, the, the fact is that if you're making that type of cash, you're also paying off, uh, you know, a more expensive mortgage, you're paying off car loans, you might have a boat, all that type of shit that people with cash buy and all of a sudden if it gets dropped you know if you've got a three-year contract and a four-year contract or someone like Caelan Ponga who's making 600 and I don't know half a dozen the other making a million I don't know how much Caelan Ponga makes but it's close to a million right uh, maybe 850 if he gets told tomorrow listen you're going to only make a hundred thousand dollars well most of that goes on bills if not yeah close to most of it so to have that news is terrifying and particularly if you can't plan for it like if you get injured, you do your ACL, you're out for 12 months, whatever it is, you know, you still, you've got income protection or you're still on contract, you know, you can still make money. Now you're just fucked. Oh, absolutely. And the irony is, is the same people going, they're on a million bucks or whatever, are the same people that would have said, don't be stupid with your money, invest in real estate, invest in, you know, buy things and that. So when they retire that they have assets. So like if they're doing what most people tell them to do, which is be smart with their money, they actually are in a worse off situation than a young guy that's got heaps of cash coming in and he's just spending it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I understand people's pain right now. Like sometimes they're, they're actually just expressing it cause they're in pain themselves. Like he's on a million bucks and it's really just a, an outlet of their own stress. So I understand that side of things. I, I get it. But at the same time, um, yeah, like a lot of people don't understand if you are earning a lot of money, most of those guys have, are taking that money to invest it, understanding that that is not going to be coming in for the rest of their life. And if they don't have assets when they retire, they're essentially just sitting there going, I'm, I'm stuffed. I've got a lifestyle that I'm used to. Can't afford to pay for it. Um, so, yeah, mate, it, it's absolutely, especially like there actually might be some guys that are on a million dollars that are going to get hit harder 
yeah. than the guys on 80K or 100K because of all the, the outlays that they have um, currently. So, yeah, mate, I'm, I'm totally with you. It's, um, again, it's not a woe is me, that's for sure. There's fucking plenty of people doing worse. But it is fair to kind of sit back and go, all right, what is the reality of the situation? Not like, oh, they've got a million dollars because the media fucking said they did. You know, what's the reality of the way they're living kind of thing? But also to touch on what you said before, this is a short period of time, you know, mm. and for a lot of young people, and I'm not sure what the NRL is doing at the moment as far as education and things like that. But if you're a young person who is in rep squads and all those type of things, Harold Matz, all that shit back in when you're a younger person, maybe 15, 16, you know, you're committing three, four days a week to traveling, going to training, and then you're on the weekend, you're away doing that. Maybe you don't have the amount of time you have, you, a normal person your age has to uh, contribute to education or put into thinking about what you want to do. And a lot of these people who we're talking about here are, they're winners. They're people that are just so, so dedicated and they want to, they want to win at what they're trying to do. And that is, in this case is rugby league uh, or, or whether it's soccer or rugby union, whatever, they're all in the same boat. You know, they dedicate their times to being as good as they possibly can. You don't have the same amount of time to go to uni as someone else your, your age uh, has. So to then be told that, okay, this, this window of 11 years has just been cut to 10 years, you're missing out on a big chunk of what could be super, what could be uh, paid off, you know, 30% of your, 20% of your home loan. It's a big step back for a lot of people. Oh, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. I think if you, again, I, I just think that a lot of people, it's not because they're, they're bad people when they're bagged in the boys. They just don't have the information. They don't actually understand that, for example, you know, most players, let's say, that, like it's really good at the moment, but let's say on, on an average, every NRL player is on 300K. Let's just assume that amount. Now, if you take that 300K and you span it out over a 40-year career or a 50-year career, it actually turns into... Um, you know, fuck all pretty much. Yep. The, the official term is fuck all. Yep. Um, and so the irony with that is, is so they're actually to get to play in a role from basically when they were five to 17, they were working towards that goal. And yet a doctor from out of school for seven years only has to work seven years essentially to get to that dream. And then for the rest of his life, he just keeps going up and up and up. And so it's actually an unfair trade. I know it sounds bizarre. I fucking know. And don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here saying like, oh, woe is me. I got to play NRL. Fuck, no way. But what I'm saying is when you actually look at the numbers and the amount of time it has been uh, put in to actually achieve what they've achieved, they're actually getting ripped off like over a lifetime um, you know, period. Again, this is not me saying like they, they really are, are being ripped they off. They are being yeah. ripped off. Particularly when you look at the NRL and they're, they're making, you know, these billion dollar TV deals a couple of years ago. and now, you know, there's some people who are making their first grade debut or they've been in first grade as just sort of someone coming off the bench for a couple of years now and they're only making a hundred grand. Considering that like, people don't understand what a billion dollars is, it is a lot of money. It is so much money, and the NRL are making an absolute shit ton. Even things like State of Origin, the amount of money that they make from that oh. to only play that pay the players, what is it? A couple of. 10, 20, 30K each. 30K? 30K each, yeah. Fuck all. That is absolute fucking nothing. And that is one of the worst things about, but it's not just the NRL, it's the UFC as well. And all these people, they don't pay their people enough. And I understand yeah. that because they're, they're the, what else are you going to do? You know, yeah. they're the powers that be. What else are you going to do? But it is, it is not fair. And that's where the Players Association and unions come into uh, they really need to have them there in those situations to make sure that, because unfortunately with rugby league, and I know this from playing uh, in lower grades for, for, for X amount of years, was a lot of people, they're, they're not overly intelligent. If you're going to run head first no, into people, they are not overly yeah. intelligent, particularly in the yes. forwards. I mean, you know, <laughs> as a front rower. <laughs> Uh, an ex-front row. I think you're being, you're being generous by saying yeah. you're not overly intelligent. You're being generous. There is a lot of dumb cunts that play rugby league. And <laughs> exactly. That's that just was, the way that it is. a fair statement. That's just the way it is. That's, that's what Fuck this podcast up. is going to be called. The dumb cunts <laughs> that play rugby league. <laughs>